So let's think about this first situation where you've got three dice and the particular discrete random variables they're interested are not all the different values. Have a look up the top there. It says, let capital X be what? Yeah, I, I just want to know how many fives and sixes are there. I, I'm rolling three dice every time. That's what it says in the top left. Three dice are thrown. And I'm just interested in how many high ones do I have, right? So this is equivalent to how many vowels do I have? Or how many people am I going to get who are going to vote for Labour? How many voting for Liberal, right? So you define the discrete random variable for yourself. And then have a look at this table. Now, read it with me, right? It says the probability distribution, we've seen many of these before, for this experiment is shown below, and it can be calculated using a probability tree. Now, don't worry about drawing this, but have a think. A probability tree looks something like this, and we can like branch out. There's going to be three dice, so I would have three levels to my branches. Every time I roll the dice, I either have a high number, five or six, or a low number. So what would the theoretical probability, if I didn't roll any dice, I just thought in my head, what would the theoretical probabilities be for high? Two on six, right? Because there's the five and the six, and this entire sample space is six. Of course, this thing here, the complement, we can just say that's four over six. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then I keep going through the branches to be able to work out on the end what each of the numbers is. And you can see that the things calculate, OK? By the way, the denominator is 27. That's because I could equally have written 2 out of 6 as 1 out of 3. And so when you have thirds, and then thirds, and then thirds a third time, 3 times 3 times 3 gives you that denominator. Does that make sense? OK, great. Now, it then says, graph this distribution. And then we can calculate mu. They've used this notation, variance equals, what's that Greek letter? We've seen it before. That's, sig that's sigma, that's standard deviation. But they're calling variance, think back to yesterday, right? They're calling variance sigma squared, standard deviation squared. What, why is that? Very good. Standard deviation, the way we got that was we found variance first, we took the square root. So you can see, you can go in either direction, can't you? You can go this way, take the square root, or you can go backwards and square. Um, it's just that they like using this because it's very succinct notation. Okay? So we can work out that, and we can also, of course, work out what the theoretical standard deviation is. So firstly, I'm going to help you graph this. Okay? Um, on your laptops, if you haven't got them there, open them up. We used Excel, um, or we have used Excel, over the past week and a half. Um, but you've used Desmos before, and I hope you keep on using Desmos. You might not realize that it's actually really good for doing things like what this question is asking of us. So what I'm going to do is I'll move this up here a little bit and make it smaller so we can see everything at the same time. I think that'll be enough room. Let me sneak this in. And, uh, OK. So. Once you're at Desmos there, or if you're leaning over to, I know it's athletic, so it's, you know, a lot of you don't have your device, but that's OK. Um, in this top left-hand corner, right, normally we would just put in something like, you know, oh, x squared, and you've got a, you've got a function, right? But we don't want to just draw a graph. We actually want to tabulate some data. So can you see where there's that plus sign right there? Go ahead and click on that. And it gives you five options. It says expression, note, table, folder, image. Which would you guess is the one that we want? Table, so that's the third one down right there. Okay. So it gives you two columns, x1, y1, and what we're going to use them for is the discrete random variable, x, and what do you think we're going to use for y? Have a look at the table that they've handed us. Yeah, it'll be the probability, right? Now we could relabel it, but actually I don't really mind. Let's just leave them labeled as they are. So when you press 0, you get that first value there. If I hit enter, I go down the columns. So these are 1, 2, and 3. Why do, they, um, why do they stop at 3, by the way? Why is that? Why not go 4, 5, 6? There are three dice, right? So this is the most number of high numbers, 5s and 6s, that I can get. And then here, I now have those probabilities from that top, or that, um, yeah, that table on the top. It's the second row. So I can just put in 8 divided by 27. There you go, there's a number, and I'm going to hit enter, and you can fill in the table. Can you go ahead and do that for me? Yeah. 
Okay. So hopefully it didn't take too long to type and you've got something like this. Now I'm gonna move this just so we can see it a little better. Uh, my numbers are all really tiny, right? Why is that, by the way? They're all less than one. This is a probability distribution after all. So the, the biggest they're gonna be is one. So obviously you can, um, you can zoom into this if you like, like so. I think that I'm gonna use, let's see if we can change this. If you go to um, the spanner up in the top right hand corner, you can change these values to be whatever you like. So I'm gonna make my y axis go from, let's go negative 0 0.5, let's go up to I reckon 0 0.7 should do it. There we go. That looks a little more reasonable. Okay, so I can see the data a little more clearly now. You can see where um, each of the values 0, 1, 2, and 3 are horizontally, and then probability is how high they are. Okay, so what you're looking at here is a graph of the probability distribution function. All right, let me pause for a moment. We're going to come back to this graph in a bit, but remember they asked us to do some other things. Calculate mu. This is our expected value. Calculate your variance off of that and then calculate your standard deviation. Can I give you a few minutes to work together and work out what those three numbers are for this theoretical data set? Off you go. The first thing that we're looking for is mu, the expected value, right? Now the expected value is a sum of different things. What is it a sum of? X times the probability that X happens, right? X times p of x. Now, we've done this before, right? We can say, oh, I can just use my spreadsheet to work out x multiplied by p of x, right? And what's great about Excel is <clears throat> it'll just take care of all of those formulas for me, for me once I copy and paste it all along. It was the sum, right? So in order to get expected value, I say the sum of all those things right there, okay? So this is my value right here. Hmm. Now just hold on for a minute, right? Is this what you would expect? Because you should always check and say, like, is this, is this intuitive or not? Now, did you get this calculation yourself? Yes. yes. It should be roughly what we expect because have a look at these probabilities, right? Zero, one, two, and three. They're the, the options. And you can see what's, what's the most likely option. It's, have a look carefully. It's, it's one, it has the highest probability, right? So you know the center of the data is likely to be around there and then it kind of tapers off after that. It turns out that it tapers off quite precisely around one. So there you go. So there you go, right there, that's my expected value, that's mu. From there we want to work out variance and then we take the square root for standard deviation. Now, yesterday we worked out there were two ways to work out variance. Can we use the spreadsheet to do it the easy way? How did we do that? We had another row, do you remember? What was the other row? Yeah x squared px. So I'm going to write this as x squared px. That's actually just a labeling for me, um, just so that I can remember it. That's actually a bit messy. I should put brackets around that, like so. Okay, now because what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, take that thing above and then multiply by x again. So x is up on that top row, okay? So I could do that and then I can paste it across. Now this thing here, the sum of x squared px, This is not the variance, right? Um, I've worked out what its value is, but if I add these things up, it's not the variance. I've got to subtract something. Someone remember what I need to subtract? Mu squared, right? One of the ways to remember this is the squares go together, okay? Now thankfully, I've got mu on my spreadsheet already. It's right there in this cell, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the sum of everything in that row, bam, there it is. That's this part here. And then I'm gonna say, let's, uh, let's say it's this, take away the square of the expected value. That's mu squared right there. Now even though one squared is one, which you know, uh, it's important that we put the right formula because maybe we change this data set and we get some other expected value and then we want our formulas to change in response. I'll hit enter, we've got this. Have a think for a moment. So that's like two thirds, right? And it's, it's obviously rounding off. Is this a reasonable answer for the variance? I, 
feels like it should be, right? This is a, a measure of how spread out the data is. It's not super spread out, right? There's only uh, a maximum of three is the range and they're all pretty close to one. So I'm pretty happy with that. I've got one last thing, which is the standard deviation. How did I get that again? Take the square root. Now, um, we've seen there's no multiply symbol, so we use an asterisk. There's no divide symbol on the keyboard, so we use the slash. Does anyone know how we take the square root? It's really quite funny. Here, we write squirt. Uh, square root, there you go. Uh, and then you put a bracket in to, to start a function, and then you just select whatever thing, whatever number you wanted to take the square root of, which in this case is that one right there. Then there's our standard deviation, okay? Now, What's great about this is we've set all of this up and the question gives us then a new table of data. Now have a look at this for a minute. Read part B, you can see it right there. The frequency table below gives the results when the experiment was done a hundred times. So this is kind of like a sample, right? Uh, we can't do it an infinite number of times, but we can do it some finite number of times, and then we get a data set out of this, okay? So we're gonna do exactly what the question asks. It's two things. We're going to graph it, and then we are going to calculate all of this stuff, okay? Now, the first thing it says is calculate the relative frequencies. How did we do that? Say when we were doing the vowels and the scrabble tiles, right? How did we get this number 0.36? X divided by the total. X divided by the total every time, okay? Have a look here. You can see that you've got those frequencies there, 33, 47, 16, etc. What's the total? It's on the right-hand side. It's 100, right? So this is actually really neat. All we need to do is because it's just place value, right? For the first one, 33 divided by 100, what's that as a decimal? 0 0.33. The next one over will be 0 0.47, etc. All right, come back to Desmos for me, okay? We can start up a new table, so hit the plus sign again. Scroll down to that third option, table, there we go. The x's are going to be exactly the same as they were before, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then if I scroll here and just make this a bit more visible, there we go. Uh, you told me that the first one was 0 0.33. And then the next one was 0 0.47, and so on. So let's go ahead and complete that. Just be careful for that last one, it's, a, it's 4, not 40, so it should be 0 0.04. Bam, okay, great. Now, just have a quick look, I'll make this a bit taller. Do you have something that roughly matches this? Is that roughly what it looks like? So, here's what I wanna pose to you, right? Why aren't my red dots, which is the, the sample, why aren't they on top of the green dots? Like, why aren't they in exactly the same spots? Have a think about what we did at the start, right? Because, yeah, it's going to be different every time, right? If we rolled these a hundred more times, you'd get a new set of data again. And every time you sample, you will get something different, okay? Is it pretty close, though? Yeah. It's pretty close, right? Good. So let's go back to Excel now, because what they've asked us to do is calculate the same three things. Uh, sample mean, sample variance, sample standard deviation, um, but for this new set of data. So. Here's Excel, and don't you love this, right? You can just be super lazy with it. I can just take all of this so that we can compare it. I'll paste it down below. And now let's change our values. So what did we say they were? I think I've got them there, 0 0.33, 0 0.47, 0 0.16. What was the last one again? 0 0.04. Now the beauty of Excel, ah, it's so delightful when this happens, right? is that all the calculations are done already, and what we can do is we can just compare them. I might make this a bit taller, so you can see them both at the same time. Okay, 